the living conditions of modern people are getting better and better, and the level of science and medical treatment is getting higher and higher. But people's health seems to be far behind the people of the past, and various diseases are plaguing people, especially diabetes. And now the number of people with diabetes is increasing year by year. According to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2045, the number of people with diabetes will reach a staggering 700 million. So after our group discussion, we plan to make a training video on diabetes prevention. We intend to introduce our training content video from the following five points. First, introduction of diabetes. Second, prevention and discovery of diabetes mellitus. Third, treatment of diabetes. Fourth, therapeutic drugs for diabetes. Fifth, healthy diet for diabetes. Part 1, Introduction to Diabetes. Diabetes is a metabolic disease that results in different types of diabetes, including type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, and other types of diabetes. Due to the inability of the pancreas to produce enough insulin, or the insensitivity of cells to insulin, as diabetes progresses, it eventually leads to systemic microcirculatory disorders resulting in complications, including diabetic retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic peripheral neuropathy, diabetic foot, and cardiovascular disease. There are two main types of diabetes. Type 1, and type 2. They're different conditions, but they're both serious. There are some other rarer types of diabetes too. What all types of diabetes have in common is that they cause people to have too much glucose in their blood. But we all need some glucose. It's what gives us our energy. We get glucose when our bodies break down the carbohydrates that we eat or drink, and that glucose is released into our blood. We also need a hormone called insulin, it's made by our pancreas, and it's insulin that allows the glucose in our blood to enter our cells and fuel our bodies. If you don't have diabetes, your pancreas senses when glucose has entered your bloodstream and releases the right amount of insulin so the glucose can get into your cells. But if you have diabetes, this system doesn't work. When you've got type 1 diabetes, you can't make any insulin at all. If you've got type 2 diabetes, it's a bit different. The insulin you make either can't work effectively or you can't produce enough of it. In both types of diabetes, because glucose can't get into your cells, it begins to build up in your blood. And too much glucose in your blood causes a lot of different Clinical manifestations, the main ones are as follows. 1. The onset of the disease is rapid, often due to infection or improper diet and there may be a family history. 2. In typical cases, there are three symptoms of polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, and emaciation. 3. Children with atypical insidious onset of the disease mostly show fatigue and weakness, urine loss, and loss of appetite. 4. 20% to 40% of children present with diabetic ketoacidosis as an emergency. 5. The general symptoms include blurred vision, headache, muscle weakness, slow wound healing, and very itchy skin. People at high risk for diabetes are divided into several categories. First, people who are relatively older than 40 years old. Second, people who are obese or overweight. Third, people whose lifestyle is mainly sedentary. Fourth, patients with a family history of diabetes. Family history does not refer to parents, including siblings, and siblings of parents, etc. Fifth, women who have delivered a child of more than 8 pounds in previous pregnancies, or who have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Sixth, people who have not been diagnosed with diabetes, but have reached the condition of pre-diabetes and impaired glucose regulation. In addition to the above six categories also include people with other diseases, such as hypertension, hyperlipidemia, coronary heart disease, and patients who have used steroids. Once diagnosed, diabetes often requires lifelong dependence on exogenous insulin replacement therapy. After diagnosis, it is necessary to test blood glucose and improve diet and exercise.
Otherwise, it will cause some complications, such as diabetic retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, neuropathy including sensory, foot damage, autonomic, including sexual abnormalities and gastroparesis, and macrovascular complications such as cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral arterial disease, and also cause comorbidities, hypertension, dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, hyperuricemia, and others, psychological problems, oral diseases. The disease may also lead to psychological problems and oral diseases. Part 2 Prevention and Discovery of Diabetes Mellitus The incidence of diabetes is mainly related to genetic factors, environmental factors, and autoimmune factors. However, changes in environmental factors actually play a very important role in the pathogenesis of diabetes, such as population aging, lifestyle changes, and changes in dietary structure, etc., which will lead to a significant increase in the prevalence of diabetes. Therefore, we intend to introduce how to prevent diabetes from the following aspects. 1. A reasonable diet is required. The following points can be noted. 1.1 Diet Low fat, low sugar, low salt. It is recommended to have a low fat, low sugar, low salt, and high fiber diet. Increase the intake of unsaturated fatty acids, eat less greasy and fried foods, and control the total daily calorie intake. 1.2 Eat fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Eat fruit between meals you can choose between 10 am and 4 pm, and you can't eat too much, such as an apple or peach at a time. The types of vegetables also need to be diversified, eat 2 to 5 kinds at a meal. Try to choose a simpler cooking method, and avoid consuming more oil and salt. 1.3 Appropriately control the amount of staple food. Under normal circumstances, the consumption of staple food is Determined according to the level of physical activity, the staple food should be eaten in rotation or mixed, so as to ensure that one third of the staple food is coarse grains. The specific amount of staple food should be dexterously grasped to keep the weight within the standard range. 1.4 Focus on high quality protein. Choose high quality protein foods. Plant based foods are best with soul products and animal-based foods are best with fish and lean meat. To develop good living habits, the following points can be noted. 2.1 Ensure adequate sleep. Studies have shown that not getting enough sleep or getting too much sleep can increase the risk of diabetes. Different age groups have different requirements for the length of sleep. Before puberty, children should sleep more than 10 hours. Young people should sleep 8 hours and middle-aged people should sleep at least 6 hours. People with poor sleep quality should take medicine if they cannot adjust themselves. Now the new sleeping pills have few side effects and can be taken intermittently. 2.2 Decompression Take 3 deep breaths before doing. Chronic stress can cause blood sugar to rise. Experts recommend taking 3 slow, deep breaths before doing anything to reduce stress. 3. Staying active is also crucial to preventing diabetes. The guidelines for diabetes prevention and treatment suggest that 150 minutes of aerobic exercise should be performed every week, which can be spread over 5 to 6 days, that is, about 30 minutes per day. Among all sports, walking is suitable for the widest population, is not limited by venue and time, and is relatively safe. The pace and pace can be adjusted by oneself, and the damage to the joints is small. For the blood sugar level of the patient should be checked regularly, and early detection and early treatment can also help prevent the occurrence of diabetes. In the early stage of diabetes, there are generally no obvious symptoms and clinical manifestations. In the early stage of diabetes, patients can only find out the disease through physical examination or blood sugar test. So we intend to introduce how to detect diabetes from the following two perspectives. 1. Regular physical examination. 2. Regular blood sugar testing. Part 3. Treatment of diabetes.
It is divided into five parts, health education and insulin, diet therapy and exercise therapy, and self-monitoring. Diabetes education Every diabetes patient should receive diabetes education. Once diagnosed with diabetes, the purpose of the education is to let the patients understand the knowledge about diabetes and diabetes complications and diabetes complications and master the diabetes self-management methods. It needs to be treated with insulin. Non-intensive treatment patients were injected two to three times a day, and intensive treatment patients were injected three to four times a day. Blood glucose monitoring includes monitoring blood glucose before and two hours after three meals. Glycosylated hemoglobin is generally monitored once every three months. Diet treatment is the basis for the treatment of various types of diabetes. Some patients with mild diabetes can control their condition by eating alone. Exercise can improve the body's sensitivity to insulin, reduce body weight, reduce body fat, and enhance physical strength. Increasing physical activity can improve the body's sensitivity to insulin, reduce body weight, reduce body fat, enhance physical strength and improve workability and quality of life. Part 4. Diabetes Treatment Medications 1. Begonides Metformin, as a first-line therapeutic agent started, at the same time as lifestyle intervention, is the drug of choice for patients with type 2 obese diabetes. This class of drugs reduces blood glucose primarily by inhibiting hepatic glucose output, improving peripheral tissue insulin resistance, promoting tissue uptake of glucose and facilitating anaerobic enzymolysis of glucose, and inhibiting or delaying intestinal absorption of glucose. To insulin stimulants, sulfonylureas are mainly used for non-obese patients with type 2 diabetes, who still have some secretion function of pancreatic beta cells. They mainly stimulate the secretion of insulin by pancreatic beta cells to exert hypoglycemic effects, including sulfonylureas and glynides. 3. Sazodinidionides For patients with obesity or diabetes mellitus with three highs and cardiovascular disorders, mainly to improve insulin sensitivity, increase glucose uptake by skeletal muscle and reduce adipose tissue. Breakdown to improve blood glucose for alpha glucosidase inhibitors for patients with type 2 diabetes who have poor glycemic control despite diet and exercise, especially those with reduced glucose tolerance, reduces postprandial blood glucose by inhibiting the absorption of carbohydrates in the upper small intestine. 5. GLP-1 receptor agonists glucagon-like peptides enhances insulin secretion in a glucose concentration-dependent manner, inhibits glucagon secretion, delays gastric emptying, and reduces food intake through central appetite suppression. 6. DPP-4 inhibitors Used alone, they do not increase the risk of hypoglycemia and do not increase body weight. It stimulates insulin secretion from beta cells while inhibiting glucagon secretion. And this mechanism of action is glucose concentration dependent, thus effectively reducing glycated hemoglobin, fasting blood glucose and postprandial blood glucose and maximizing the prevention of hypoglycemia. 7. SGLT2 inhibitors SGLT2 inhibitors lower the renal glucose threshold by inhibiting SGLT2, which is responsible for the reabsorption of glucose from the urine in the renal tubules and promote urinary glucose excretion, thereby achieving a reduction in circulating glucose levels. SGLT2 inhibitors have comparable glucose lowering efficacy to metformin when compared with other all hypoglycemic agents. 8. Insulin this includes rapid-acting, short-acting, long-acting, and basal insulins. For patients with type 1 diabetes, insulin is the only therapeutic agent, and about 30% to 40% of patients with type 2 diabetes eventually require insulin. Your doctor has told you that you need to take diabetes medication. But how exactly do different medications work to control your blood sugar? A medication like metformin works on your liver. 
This pill keeps your liver from releasing too much glucose. Other medications like glipicide, which you also take as a pill, help your pancreas make more insulin, which lowers blood sugar. Type 2 diabetes is a disease that progresses over time. That means even if you're doing everything right, exercising, eating healthy food, taking your medication, most people are still going to need insulin at some point. That's because your body stops making insulin. Insulin is a natural hormone and it's safe, effective, and easy to use. Insulin must be injected to work. This natural hormone helps move sugar from the bloodstream into cells where it's needed for energy. To help manage your blood sugar, you need to always take your medications as prescribed. Don't forget to refill your prescriptions at least a week before you run out. You don't want to miss a dose. Talk to your doctor or care team if you have questions. You can live well when you take control of your diabetes. We have online tools, articles, videos, and photo stories to help you. Part 5 – Healthy Diet for Diabetes Diet control is diabetic the top priority of treatment. All diabetic, whether it's light or heavy, whether it's insulin or oral hyperglycemic drug things, must carry on the diet control and should persist for life. Patients with diabetes mainly eat the following categories of food. 1. Various food crops. Patients with diabetes can eat some grains such as koi seed, black rice, oats, buckwheat, mung beans, etc. Or choose whole wheat food, which is rich in trace elements. Long-term consumption can reduce blood sugar and blood lipid. Grains have high nutritional value, can increase satiety, control appetite, absorb slowly after entering digestive tract, and can effectively delay the rise of postprandial blood sugar, which is more suitable for patients with diabetes. 2. Food high in fiber. It is beneficial for diabetics to eat more foods rich in dietary fiber, such as corn, celery, leeks, beans, pumpkins, bamboo shoots, etc. To promote sugar metabolism and prevent excessive absorption of blood sugar, foods rich in fiber can reduce blood sugar and increase satiety in diabetics. 3. Vegetables with low sugar, leek, zucchini, winter melon, pumpkin, eggplant, bitter gourd, onion, mushrooms, etc. These vegetables are low-calorie vegetables which can not only improve satiety, but also lower blood sugar. 4. Foods rich in vitamins, tomatoes, cabbage, etc. Vitamin supplementation is of great significance for preventing and treating diabetic nerve, blood vessel and eye complications. Diet is the basic therapy to treat diabetes, and it is the premise of all treatment methods. It is suitable for all types of diabetic patients. Light cases can get good results by diet therapy, and moderate and severe patients must also use physical therapy and drug therapy reasonably on the basis of diet therapy. Only when the diet is well controlled, all hypoglycemic agents or pancreatic outlets can have a good effect. Otherwise, blindly relying on the so-called new drugs and good medicines and ignoring the diet therapy will make it difficult to achieve good clinical results.